to my conclusion because she has a short face. I mean, the lower facial height is decreased and the special characteristics is lip seal. She doesn't have a gap in the anterior, uh, in the labia, in the, the, the lips, okay? So, but today we are going to show much more clinical cases than the other. Uh, so I would like to talk a little bit about uh, head natural position because before we study the patient's face, we have to be sure that the patient it is with the, 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 the head in a natural position, okay? And if you look at closer in this girl, you are going to see the TR points is tragus, tragus point, and PN points is a pronasal point, is the tip of the nose. So it is a, a, a paper that we have written in the, we studied this in the Tabate University. It's a post-graduation course conclusion thesis, uh, where I was at the, the thesis advisors, and the student was Rogério Tupinamba. And the theme of the, the, the thesis was horizontal line as a reference uh, for a head natural position. Okay, look at this girl. She's looking at the mirror, and nobody look at by itself, by him, by itself, at the mirror with the, the head lifted or in a down position, okay? So uh, it's supposed that the girl is looking at the mirror in the natural position of the head. So in the, we, before taking the, 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 the picture, we put in front of the girl a plumb, and you know that's the, a plumb is a true vertical line and we've made a perpendicular line in this perpendicular line is a true horizontal line okay and we've realized that this horizontal line with the patients in the horizontal position and uh, in the, the natural position of the, this uh, head this uh, the, uh, the line is pathing throughout those points, TR point and PN point, okay? So take a look at this girl. If you make uh, two points, tragus points and pronasal point. Tragus is on the ear and pronasal point is at the tip of the nose. If you make these points, you make a line passing throughout the TR point in the three faces. You can see that in the left uh, photograph, the girls looks like um, class three because the head is lifted. In the middle is closer than class two. And the, the right one, the natural position of the head, it makes huge difference before studying the upper lip, the lower lip and chin that we are going to study, okay? <clears throat> so take a look at this girl with a bad profile. If you look at uh, closer here, the chin is different than the chin, the right side, because in the left side, the line is not passing through the PN point. So it's the same girl and two different interpretation of the profile, okay? Coming back to the girl with a good profile that we saw uh, the last webinar, uh, we are going to see that the girls has a lower facial height decreased And you can see, let me make some zoom here first. Give the two eyes the gospel trial. Okay. Uh, the lower facial height is decreased, this girl. And I put one more guy. 
that this guy has two different characteristics. He has a lower facial height increased, different than the other girl. You can see here, the lower facial height is increased. Like this uh, convex profile girl, increase the lower facial height. Okay, and the last girl, that, the, the first girl that we saw in the last webinar, we saw that uh, we could treat her very easy, just wearing uh, light class to elastics with the anchorage band, as posterior anchorage band. We, we could solve this case without bonding the upper premolar. It was very easy because the girl's face was very easy. So we have in our mouth uh, four pillars, uh, two anterior pillars and two posterior pillars. I, I call these pillars the canines, is the anterior pillars, and the molars are the posterior pillars. And the incisors and premolars are, uh, are nothing but bricks, you know? So if we move the posterior pillars backward, I mean, promoting distalization or extruding molars, uh, you know that our mouth works like a scissor. And when we move back the posterior pillar, the scissor is gonna be opened, okay? The, move, the scissor is, it will open. So, and the lower arch is, will move like a scissor, this way, backward and down. So you can ask me about the girl with a good profile, with lip seal, with uh, work with uh, class two elastics or harvest appliance or whatever um, way of you want to, to correct without extraction, you are going to extrude, extrude molar and move the molars distally. So what about the girl's profile? If move, if extrude posterior teeth or move them backwards, uh, the chin is gonna be moved down and backward, okay? But the class two elastics is gonna uh, move the mandible tends to move the mandible forward. So we have a resultant here and the chin is gonna be moved forward and down. Because of this is too important, so important to have a, a lower facial high decreased in non-extraction treatment. So on the other hand, we've moved the posterior pillars, I mean the molars forward, we promote mesialization of the molars, the scissors, will close and the mandible will close as well, okay? So this clinical situation is, I used to, to, to do that, moving molar forward, promoting extraction, okay? Look at this girl. I make this line, the, the black line, of, uh, trying to say that's a kind of scissor uh, with, uh, through the upper incisor, upright the lower one, and after doing that, move the molar forward, the scissor is gonna be moved up and forward, okay? So in long face patient and convex patient, in profile convex, with a lip seal, we use to, to work with intrusion, or extraction and promoting the posterior premolars extraction, second premolar extraction, and moving the molars forward. This is the bad grower patient. But I, I have choice, I, I made a choice, a patient that I had uh, some doubts, is the boy in the middle. Because the girl in your left side it's very easy to understand that uh, we cannot make any extraction. The girl uh, on your right side, you can see that is, the profile is asking 
for extraction in my mind. But the paw in the middle has these characteristics. I mean, the goniac angle and synthesis is uh, nearest than the girl in the left side, the goniaco angle. So looks like good to be treated in the very beginning when you look at him. But on the other hand, if you look at closer the, the lips, we have a gap here like the girl, the bed grower girl. So let's see this clinical case. The boy was a 12 years old boy, 20, I think 10 years old boy, and, and was forcing to achieve lip seal with a very strong overjet. If you look at the molar, we have a one step class two, one step in the molar. And here the overjet view, a different overjet view, and the occlusal views. And this is my point. So this, this boy had a good um, chin and a good goniac angle. And in addition, uh, he didn't have any problem in the lower arch, okay? So I thought, I'm not crazy. I'm not going to make any extraction in this case because in the, the lower arch is everything okay. And uh, we have, and he had um, a good chin and a good uh, goniaco angle. So I started my treatment, the treatment uh, plan uh, without making any extraction uh, using bumper iris leaf uh, for distalizing the, the molars and very light class two elastics. This uh, yellow one is um, less than two and a half ounces. It's about two ounces maximum. It's very light. Uh, and when, as the, the boy didn't have a canine erupted already, we put the, the bumper iris sleep very, very uh, fixed. The, just a side by side, the circle and the molar two to transmit the force. And for my surprise, the, the overjet was very correct, very fast. Take a look at the, the infallible machine. The ligature. Take a look at the ligature. I, I made the ligature like an uh, X just to, to try to, to get more sliding position a lot, okay? The ligature here is that kind of, um, I was trying to achieve a, a self-ligating bracket. So the other month, the guy appeared with uh, open bite and anterior teeth. And I got very uh, nervous because it was going so fast, too fast. And I look at his profile and take a look at his face here. It was getting worse. It's getting super open, super gap in the anterior teeth. So I have changed my mind because I, it was in the beginning of the treatment. I talked with his mom and told her that we've changed our mind and that we are going to promote four extractions. And we extracted uh, two first premolars, upper premolars, and two second uh, lower premolars. And we keep uh, using our way of working with uh, SSW way of working with anchorage bands and class two elastics. And here you can see the open coined 
uh, achieving spaces for uh, canine eruptions. And you can see that the molars are, are being moving forward by itself. I wasn't pulling them, okay? Here we have the upper canine erupting. Uh, this one with uh, sidewinder springs on the lower arch, uh, uprighting the canines, waiting for the canine 13 finished uh, its eruption. Here with the all teeth uh, bonded, second molar, first molars, short class to elastics because after after correcting the overjet, we start uh, wearing short class to elastics to achieve good torques because the next arch wires uh, must be a rectangular one. Here we have still are using O20 and the boy's face have changed the opposite way. You can see that the, the gap was decreasing and was still, uh, uh, he was still forcing to achieve lip closer or lip seal. And here we, we are thinking about promote some torques. And if you look at closer, this these braces was too down the upper the, the upper arch. Okay, so we have to change it these braces and put them more in the middle of the crown to achieve better torques. And here here with a night eye arch wire and promoting alignment with a premolar, adjusting the premolar uh, cuspids. Still with um, O16 arch wire, adjusting embracing pieces and new photograph. The guy start growing, he grow, grew up a lot, became a very tall guy. But take a look at the, the lips as are getting close. And now after promoting extractions, uh, the profile uh, got uh, opposite way, okay? Here embracing the last teeth, the, the, the posterior teeth, and we removed the braces. The day that I removed, you can see some blood in the molar because of bands. Comparing we had in the beginning a one step class two, and now we have a class one relationship, occlusal view. And here, the boy's profile at the end of treatment. I put this, this picture because to show how tall the guy became. In one year, the guy, I, he is almost two, two meters. <clears throat> So we have now all profiles, we can compare them. Take a look at the profile evolution. The chin move it forward and up. And we achieve almost achieve a lip seal. Okay. So the most important thing in this clinical case that we have to learn is if you are with a doubt of making extraction or not making extraction. Uh, if is, I think is more ethic uh, if we start uh, making without extraction, okay? But if in the very beginning, you, you look at the profile and the profile is getting worse, we have to change our way of working immediately, okay? And this girl, I'm going to to show this clinical case effort uh, later because 
I'd like to show this case when we talk about um, closing remaining ex ex spaces for an extraction, okay? So let me talk a little bit about adult patients. How can we treat? Adult patient, we can treat by promoting extraction uh, or using mini screw. We have been working a lot with mini screw in our office. I think mini screw is a, a super important thing in the orthodontist office nowadays. Without working, with impossible working without mini screw, in my mind. So, but if you are thinking about uh, use mini screw to distalize more and work with SSW technique, way, uh, technique with the SSW way of uh, uh, retracting anterior teeth. I mean, O16 Premier Plus Arch Wire and Class 2 Elastics. We have to uh, pay attention in the Class 2 Elastics because lots of orthodontists just insert uh, e link. Uh, horizontal elastics from the anterior teeth to the, uh, the mini screw. But the problem is when you make this, we have just one vector of force. And the molars, the, the, the canine anterior teeth tends to move the, uh, backwards but uh, in a buccal face at the same time. Okay? Because we have one vector of force here. And that if we have a short class to elastics, the resultant is going to be in molar direction. Okay. If you don't want to wear class to elastics, you have to make a, a something a, a, in oh, hooks. Get some hooks to promote a horizontal vector of force. Okay, so here I put uh, a very fast clinical case and a girl with uh, three quarters of class, class two um, start wearing long class two elastics in a build up in the posterior teeth. And uh, just in the very beginning, I make this because uh, just to patient to be used to wear the class two elastics in the, the next month I put the mini screw and I start pulling from with a horizontal elastics with e links uh, from the mini screw to the circle and at the same time as I told you in the slide before with a class two, a long class two elastics in, the case, in this case. When the overjet and overbite is uh, already corrected, we've changed it from long class two elastics to short class two elastics. The short one is 316 medium. The, if you buy from TP is the green one or the, the red one is almost the same. Uh, here, Ah, the gray, not green, the gray. Okay. Um, so here we almost achieved class one relationship. And this part I was wearing class two elastics in the premolar area to embrace the premolars. When the premolar was very embraced, the, uh, we came back to the first uh, premolar and the lower arch. We removed the e links. I used to remove the e links, but I did not remove the mini screw just to be sure that we will not have any bad results in the next month. A relapse of finishing before and after. Okay, just wearing mini screw. So this girl. It's a 
This girl was ascended by me, by a, a, a dentist, a friend of my, mine, uh, he's a Dr. Osvaldo Scopin from Piracicaba. He's a, a very famous prostodontic or pro prostodontist uh, doctor in whole Brazil. And Dr. Scopin sent me this girl because the girl uh, went to his office uh, asking about making some uh, ceramic laminated veneers in the anterior teeth. But Scopin sent me the girl because the girl uh, had lower facial height decreased. The lower facial height is decreased, was decreased. And at the same time, uh, she wanted to make a veneers. And if you look at closer and his, her anterior teeth, the upper incisors of exposure uh, was poor. And, and was Scopin, Dr. Scopin should increase the size of the incisors and canines. But think about increasing the incisors size. size. We make some veneers here, and then we will have um, overbite, a severe overbite here. So we had to open the bite, but I couldn't open the bite, intruding upper incisors, because the upper incisor is ex ex exposure was poor. I couldn't intrude the upper incisor, okay? So I asked him to make some veneers. Take a look at the smaller, we have some problem, the distal part of the first one, and this one as well. And my friend, uh, prostodontist, made some veneers, remove this caries, and make some veneer, it's a kind of build up made some onlays made by PMMA uh, material. And at the, at the end of the treatment, probably certainly he, he's going to change by a ceramic product, okay, material. But this way, when uh, we put onlays in the posterior teeth, take a look at the molar, where the molar grew up, okay? the size, the molar size, the lower molar size. So when we put the braces here, past the arch wire, this arch wire is going to move the teeth, the premolars up and the lower incisors forward. This way, take a look at the, um, the overjet, the view, 45, degrees grease view. When we increase the posterior teeth, as we talked before, the mandible is going to be moved down and backwards. So the class two and the overjet became worse. So here we have bonded the lower braces. Take a look at the molar promoting the premolars extrusions. All products are from TP. I like this products. The premolar is very, very the opposite of the, the white narrow, very narrow. And we promote lots of these lights and those tubes are very important. As I told you the last webinar, we have a, a, a double tube and the tube uh, that is uh, closer than the cervical uh, side is a old 36 millimeter. Uh, old 36 is very a huge tube, promotes lots of uh, freedom. Okay, here we are 
in another situation with a ICC extra ovular mini screws and uh, promoting the anterior piece retractions where uh, the, um, the teeth in the lower arch was aligned with the molar. We didn't have any speed curve and now we, the, the speed curve was flattened. So a premolar, we had here in a premolar uh, a bed, a point touching the premolar. We, we made a, a build up a little bit more. And now without wearing any elastics, just in a horizontal elastics with a horizontal vector of force. And this way it's easier to, for the patient, okay? But I prefer the other way because we, we can achieve a good embracement in the anterior teeth. Like this, I've changed it, the hook, I put the hook um, in the, the meso of the first premolar now and the short class two elastics. And for achieving good torques, we make a curve in the upper arch, a speed curve in the upper arch. And if you, for, for seeing if the speed curve in the upper arch is too strong or too light, too smooth, you insert a short class to elastics, you know? If you can see from there to here, you make the curve, insert the curve in the molar, the arch wire in the molar, and, and put the short class to elastics, and you have to look at the anterior part of the arch wire must be at the same level of the, the incisors, as we are seeing here. It's a little bit up than the, uh, the upper, the upper incisors is locked. So now uh, we are able to wear the short class to elastics without promote any extrusion of the anterior teeth. Because if you wear short class to elastics without making this curve, okay, uh, the anterior teeth, teeth is going to be moved down. We have we are going to increase the overbite. So this way, with this curve, we can, in this curve, we'll promote, when you put the elastic here, this curve will promote the premolar embracement here, okay? After a few months, we achieved this situation. And as the girl was sent to me by a, a prostodontist doctor, I would like to give her back to him uh, with a very good position of the incisors. So if you look at the girl's incisor exposure, upper incisor exposure is still poor. And we made a digital study with a HTML digital study, uh, we put uh, the incisors, uh, veneers, and look at the size, because we had in the lateral, in the, especially in the laterals, we have a space in the distal part of the laterals. Let me show you here. And uh, the lateral without veneers, we have a space. So this way, we can be sure that this space is enough, is good enough. If you make this study and for you is not good, you can change and, and move the laterals uh, near the canine and we can left leave the spaces between the incisors, upper incisors and the laterals, okay? But 
I showed this to the girl and she loved it. So now we have a model made by acrylic. And in your left side, you can see in the up without the veneers study in the in down with the veneer study. In the, after this, we make a silicone um, wall, a silicone wall, and we can make a kind of mock-up. So I call this an orthodontic mock-up. It's not a beautiful mock-up as the prostodontics guys used to do, but this way we can make a kind of study just before removing braces. Because think about if you remove the brace and the prostodontist uh, ask you for a little bit more space in the, in the uh, uh, place, you have to, to put all the braces again. So this way we can confirm, confirm and can be sure that these spaces are good. Okay, we can compare here. And we made without uh, braces, We've made another mock-up. And you can see that we don't have, we, the incisors uh, grew up, the, the incisors uh, size increased, and we don't have overbite, okay? So we can remove the braces and, and left these spaces in the la from the lateral. But now you look at the incisors, the lower incisors is, is forward to facilitate the guide, the incisors guide. Here is possible to make the ceramic uh, laminated veneer. Okay, comparing with a um, mock-up without any, the left beginning, the end in the, in the middle and the right side with a mock-up, okay? So I have sent the girl and the Dr. Scopin is, is almost starting her treatment, okay? The nearest treatment. A different way of treating an adult patient. The guy, the boy was 18 years old, boy, uh, with a severe, severe over overbite. And lots of problems with, uh, we can see here that the lower incisors exposure, we can see the lower incisors is it's not, it's not be, it can't, can't be a good uh, thing for a boy, uh, 18, 18 old boy, okay? We can, we must show only uh, the upper incisor exposure, okay? We have a corridor in the, 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 the smile, and you can see here, one step class two, second division class two, one step in a full overbite, full overbite with a problem with the second molars and the buccal, it's, a, uh, uh, it's looking at the buccal face, a constricted mandible, lower facial high decreased, And the boy had two beautiful third molars. And as we had a second molar in a bad position, uh, I th think about extraction second molars, upper second molars, to facilitate the first molar distalization because we have one step plus two and the third molars uh, will be uh, put in the second molar place. 
at the end of a treatment, okay? So, the labial mental sucus was very deep as all, all um, overbiter guys. So, extraction second molar and distalizing molars uh, and promoting some torque, the anterior teeth, and making a speed curve. This is our treatment plan, okay? And we have to make a very strong uh, curve in the lower arch, tending, aiming to intrude the lower incisors because it's too ugly, too ugly for an 18 years old boy, okay? And here, if you look at the, the zenith, we can make in the future, right? at the end of treatment or in the beginning. Nowadays, I, I, I've been changing my way of making this. I, I, I make a, a gingival, gingivectomy. I, I used to make the gingivectomy at the beginning of treatment because this way we, uh, we can see the real size of the, the incisors and we can bond the brace in the right side, in the right size. Right place, sorry. So here, you can see that we are making everything at the same time, the very beginning. It was made by a student of mine. Uh, um, I got very proud of it because Dr. Ricardo Takahashi is a, a very important teacher in the south of Brazil. And it was him uh, who worked with this case because Ricardo came to Piracicaba, to my town, to learn some, a little bit about our technique, okay? So here, you can see that we have class two elastic force directed to the molar because of bumper sleeve. We don't, we did not put any build up, any build up, okay? The bumper is leaving the lower arch is moving the molar forward and the bumper is, leaving, is transmitting this molar force by the elastics to the canine and upper incisors, the lower incisors. And we are using night tie arch wire O14 and at the same time, we are using Premier Plus both inside the arch wire. Okay, um, but you have to be sure that the O16 Premier Plus must be following those teeth that can be, it can be inserted passively. First you insert, let's come back here. First you insert the night tire dryer in all teeth, the anterior teeth. After you move the O16 premiere from the deepest part of the vestibule and move, move it down and insert it in those teeth that can be fixed very passively, okay? Because this way, the arch wire, the O16 can be slid and the anterior teeth will gonna be slided with, uh, along with it, okay? In the lower arch, we make the same. We insert the Premier Plus in those teeth that it can be inserted passively as well. Okay, here, take, take a look at the, the O16 arch wire. is very strong in both arches, in the maxilla and mandibula. Because in the last webinar, we talked about this. We told about making this anchorage band, very strong anchorage band in the upper arch only. In the lower arch, I told you to bond lower premolars and make a, a lighter 
anchorage band in the lower arch to avoid the lower incisor protrusion. But in this case, especially in this case, we want to intrude and protrude the lower incisors. Because of this, we've made in both arches the anchorage band very strong in both arches. Here you can see the ligature. Uh, ligature uh, is uh, like an X to increase uh, a little bit more the slide of the anterior teeth. Can you see here in the canine is almost a uh, self-ligating bracket. So as soon as the lower arch alignment and leveling, leveling is finished, the lower premolar are bonded, aiming to correct the speed curve, okay? So when you finish the anterior teeth alignment, I mean canines alignment and leveling, now we have to correct the speed curve. So we bond upper, the lower premolars, but in the upper arch, you have to keep wearing or keep using uh, the bumper R sleeve. So you can see here the lower arch flattened the, the SP curve. And in the upper arch, we still have a bumper R sleeve. And the first molars are almost achieving. Um, class one relationship. Look at the, the distal part, the back of the first molar, you can see the gingiva, uh, a ball in the gingiva. You said the third molar was uh, erupting. And here you can see a, a rotational spring working because in all um, braces, all brackets, and SSW brackets, uh, you have vertical slot, not in on the uh, uh, TPI brackets on K9 only. All, all brackets, the straight wire one, all of them, we have a, a vertical slot and we can wear or we can use this coin, the spring. Here you can see this, the third molar, Unfortunately, the third molar uh, re erupted um, the, uh, a buccal view, with a buccal view. And here we were thinking about, because of the third molar was erupting, I got a little a bit afraid. So I increased, I've, I've changed the, the bumper sleeve and put a coin, an open coin, uh, aiming to move the molar faster, distally, but at the same time, I increased the class two elastics force, okay? Uh, aiming to, to avoid the upper incisors movement, forward movement because of the upper coin. So comparing here, the, can you see we did not use any kind of rectangular arch wire? And you can see that upper incisors torque is much better. It's much better without wearing any or using any kind of rectangular arch wire, okay? It, it, everything is because of the uh, anchor, posterior anchorage bend. Now, with the first molar, we're in a class one relationship. We've bonded the premolars. And unfortunately, the third molar erupted in a bad position. Here with a super sidewinder spring that I made by, me, by myself with a, a long uh, arm that I put an E-link, this way we can move the third molar forward and at the same time promoting um, a canine's uprighting, okay?
look at the uh, rectangular arch wire here with a curve to increase the torque in uh, embracing a sentin, the premolars and molars. Lots of short class two elastics. Uh, here near the end of the treatment with good torques on the incisors, canine and class one relationship. Middle line is okay. You can compare the torques now. Of course, from now we have uh, used it, a rectangular arch wire. And take a look at this. All my clinical cases, I finished with a flattened speed curve in the lower arch and with a very smooth curve in the upper arch. With this curve in the upper arch, we maintain the anterior teeth bite opened and maintain the premolars and molar uh, uh, embrace it. Okay. Before and after, this case was about two years and a half on average. Conclusive view, comparing. Um, I did not, I wasn't afraid about this Scarius because uh, his uh, sister was, is a dentist, is a student of mine. Mariana, Mariana must make this uh, job, okay? Here you can see the profile. We have an increasement in the profile. Take a look at the uh, mental labial sucus. It's lighter, it's much better. The upper incisors exposure are good and we don't have any lower incisor exposure anymore, okay? The smile is good, but if you look at closer, this smile is not super good, okay? Very, very good. We can make some ging uh, gingivectomy here and gingivectomy here as well. And I, I have a, a laser and I've made with a laser. And for my surprise, the boy's crown was very big. It's a huge crown. I was removing with the laser. We can remove by layers, okay? Remove a, a little layer, another layer. And the, the most in, in, increasing, incredible thing with laser, you can see one month later, one month later, the, the gingiva was almost perfect. And one month later, the 21 zenith is a little bit higher. Here, two months later, before and after the laser, before and after, it doesn't look like a, the same mouth. Look like a different person. And this smile now is perfect without any gingiva. If you compare, incredible. Okay, I think it's almost three o'clock. Um, I think I will have enough time, a little bit more, just a little bit more to talk, well, just one case more, okay? To talk about flattening the lower arch P curve. We have a, a question here. Uh, the, the, the doctor is asking why I don't put Seth 
measures in my presentation. Because if we put Ceph measures and we talk about cephalometric measures, we are going to be here about not one hour, but three, four, and 10 hours, okay? And we can make a, a, another, a different way of making a, a, another webinar, and we can got a, a, a case, and we can talk lots of Ceph if you want. Even though I, I, I did not, I haven't been uh, using Ceph uh, lately. I use just in patients with a bad grow, a bad grow patients, class three patients uh, that we are going to see Jaraba Ceph. I, I like this. I use uh, tomographic slices. So this girl appeared in my office exhibiting this malocclusion. Uh, she came from other orthodontists, a, a colleague. Uh, she's not from my town. And if you look at these braces closer, you can see that the guy was a little, a little lost because the guy made uh, lower premolar extraction. We had some problem here with uh, uh, the position of the braces, uh, some excess of uh, the braces. But the first thing that I made, uh, I cleaned her teeth, I removed the braces, I cleaned her teeth, I touch her to brush her teeth. And now you are going to study her case, okay? Upper arch, lower arch, and good smile. The middle line was, we have a, a little problem with the middle line. The chin was a little bit forward a little bit forward, the lower facial high was decreased. So if the lower facial high was decreased, we cannot increase this problem. I mean, we cannot decrease more than is the lower facial high, okay? So it means that from the top of my head, the first time that I saw that, I think about, she doesn't have uh, any in, uh, two premolars, lower premolars. I'm going to extract two upper premolars, okay? But if I extract two upper premolars, follow me. We move the canine from there to here, the premolars place, okay? And after this, we have to close the remaining extraction spaces. So we have, it means that we have to move the molar forward. And if we move the molar forward, the chin is gonna be moved up and forward as well, okay? So this way I've changed my way of thinking and I'm going to make the opposite. I'm going to distalize molar. In this way, the girl's chin is gonna be a little bit backwards at the end of the treatment. So in the beginning, uh, I inserted a 014 night tie arch wire. And I put a, a build up in the molars because she was touching the cuspid is the upper cuspids in the, the braces, the premolar braces. The next month, uh, uh, and we put 016 Premier Plus. But now, if you look at here in the lower arch, we have a strong speed curve. And we have to flatten this curve and move the incisors forward 
we have to move the premolars upward in molar distal, in that distal movement. We have to upright the molars, okay? So, look at the canine. Uh, we talked about this in the last webinar. The canine is roots good. If the canine is good, is root probably in a good position. I think I saw. I say probably it's his lot is in a horizontal position. Yeah, you can see that. But in the lower canine, it's the most important problem in speed curve, especially in the lower arch, is the canine uh, tipped distally. When the canine is tipped distally, its, it's lot is tipped along with it, okay? And if you want to make a, a, a curve, a reverse curve, aiming to flatten the speed curve, when we insert this curve in the molar tube, the anterior part of the arch wire is going to be in the deepest part of the vestibule. And when we try to insert this curve here, this curve will not, cannot be inserted in this slot because this slot is, is tipped distally. Okay? So if we make, remove some pieces of this bracket, I mean, we make this bracket tipped brackets. Without this part of the bracket, the arch wire can be uh, can pass through its slot without any deflection. In the anterior part it can achieve the deepest part of the vestibule. At the same time, this arch wire in the premolar region area uh, is going to be up. Then the premolar is going to uh, extrude and uh, upright the premolar and at the same time is going to intrude the uh, lower incisors. But without bonding tipped brackets on canines, it's impossible to do that. So I saw lots of webinars talking about how to achieve, how to, to, to correct it, the, the speed curve to, to correct the speed curve in the lower arch is so easy. You have just to change the canine brackets and make a, a reverse curve in the arch wire, okay? So take a look now. We've, uh, we, we inserted um, ICC mini screw put e links and tippet brackets on canines with a side wider springs because tippet brackets permit the arch wire achieve the deepest part of the vessel, but tippet brackets alone did not move the canine root. So we have to ask help for the side wider in springs. Okay, so to correct, to flatten, the lower arch speed curve, we have to change the canine brackets, make a, a, a curve, um, reverse curve in the lower arch, and at the same time, insert a sidewinder spring in the canine brackets. Okay, the other side, and class two elastics, B links. Now, the canine is, is very close than the lower uh, molar, so we increase it, we, we change the, the class two elastics. Uh, it's, it's still two and a half ounces. It's shorter because the distance between the canine, upper canine and the lower molar are short. We still have Um, sorry, build up in the molars. We still have the build up in the motor. Take a look at the, the overjet is better now. Decreased. Here we have the canine 
in a class one relationship. Look at the canine 43. Uh, I've changed it and put the, the, the original one, canine brackets, okay? The regular one. But in the, the 33 is still TPI brackets on it. Now, uh, we removed the build up and put a bite ramp in the anterior teeth. This way we can, we can make a, a, a flattened upper arch wire and we are going to use uh, elastic in the posterior teeth. Now we have here a coin in the, the lateral, I mean the lateral 22 to promote in a specific torque for it, inverse uh, torque for the, 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 print, the, the, the lateral. And both two class two, short class two elastics. And here with a 016 Premier Plus again, just making some bands in the arch wire in premolar region to embracing the premolars. The torque are good. The overjets corrected. The bites open. The, upper, the lower incisors is uprighted. Now we have guide, incisors guide, the canine guide. The girl before and after. The upper incisor exposure is good. There is no more lower incisor exposure. The chin, you, you can see that the chin move it a little bit down and backwards. In this my arch, okay. So uh, I think we don't have enough time to finish. Uh, perhaps in another opportunity, we can talk about uh, closely remaining uh, ex ex space from extraction. And because uh, TP Orthodontics is organizing this webinar and we think about making three webinars, okay? And Troy can, can tell you something uh, more specific about the next one. Okay, so it's open to question and answer. It's up to you now, Troy. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, I have a couple questions on here that, uh, that I can address and then um, for, for doctors that stick around and want to dialogue um, directly with some of their larger questions, I can um, open up their mics and let them speak directly to you. But um, starting off, we had a question come in from uh, Dr. Rivera, uh, who asked uh, early on in, in your presentation why um, they would change the helix in the, in the, lower, um, in the lower back. Uh, but I don't know, what, what does helix mean? Oh, he, uh, the, apologies, my translation from Spanish might be a little poor. Uh, but he said, por que cambio el helix in inf inferior hacia atras? Yeah, um, why did I uh, uh, change it, the helix in the in lower, lower arch, lower arch. In, the back, in the back part? But I, I, I would like to know what does helix mean? Yeah, I'll get, I'll get a... Uh, I'll get more info on that and I'll connect you and Dr. Okay. Rivera via email. Okay. Um, early on in the presentation, um, Mayada asks why you twist the elastics. Is that for more force? Could you elaborate on that a little more? No, no. Is um, after twisting the elastics for about 30 years, I used to do that, but there is no uh, any means about twisting the, the elastics. You can make, because uh, twisting the elastics uh, looks like that some food uh, is, is cleaner. 
you know, but the force is almost the same. Um, not almost, uh, is exactly the same. We have a couple more questions on elastic, so I'll just I'll fire through those uh, here in good order. Um, do you use elastics in the beginning of the treatment? Yes, always. Uh, because in the beginning of the treatment, we use uh, O16 arch wire with lots of spaces inside the slot. We have low friction. So in the beginning, especially in the beginning, I use uh, long class two elastics. And from the middle to the end, when we finished the overjet and overbite, we start wearing short class two elastics. Um, further there, um, why do you use short elastics once overjet is corrected? Would you instead just use long class two elastics, but only as needed to keep overjet under control? Why the short class? Because after correcting the overjet and overbite, I have to promote more torque in lots of cases. If when you promote torques, uh, the anterior teeth tends to move down. So I make a curve in the upper arch and the rectangular arch wire. This curve will maintain the arch wire in the same level of the, 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 bra the braces uh, while we are um, promoting torque. Because if you put the rectangular arch wire, just the rectangular arch wire without any short class two elastics, the incisors uh, root is going to be moved uh, uh, backwards, but the, the crown tends to move along with the, 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 the root forward, the opposite way, okay? So the short class to elastics is to maintain the embracement between upper incisors and lower incisors while we are promoting torque. Thank you, doctor. Um, in treating class two mandibular deficiency, do you use lower full power chain with class two elastics to minimize lower incisors flaring? So this is uh, Dr. Muhammad. This, in treating class two, let me see the, the question. Yes, is Dr. Mahmoud Al Jindi. Doctor? Oh, let me patch him through one second. Okay. Dr. Al Jindi? Hello, doctor. Wow. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? All good? Good, and you? Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so good. Uh, my question is, I was having a debate with one of my uh, colleagues yesterday in treating class two uh, patients uh, with the mandibular deficiency. He was, uh, we were uh, discussing the methods, how we can decrease the lower incisor flaring so that they don't go outside the, uh, the, the bony trough. And he suggested putting a lower uh, full power chain uh, so that uh, it minimizes the lower incisor flaring. My side of the argument was not to use this because uh, treating a patient with a mandibular deficiency with class two elastics, the whole point of this treatment is a camouflage treatment where it's, uh, you will be accepting a compromised lower incisor flaring. So uh, I don't know if uh, using the lower uh, full power chain in the lower arch is the beneficial uh, mechanics from your point of view in uh, decreasing the lower insider flare, flaring or not? Thank you once again. Can you think of flaring? Uh, if I understood well, uh, you are um, afraid about the lower incisors movement, the lower incisor movement forward. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. This way, uh, because first of all. I do not believe in growth, 
patience growth. I, I believe I, I have, after lots of years working with that, uh, I saw lots of patients and uh, when you finish the treatment, uh, you can see some increasement in the, the, the chin, but after 10 years, 15 years, uh, the chin come back to the original position. So I think it's uh, compensation and teeth compensation. Okay, so to avoid this undesirable effect of this lower incisors, I wear, I use, uh, in the, especially in this case when the incisors is, uh, is uh, in, a, in the, the edge of the, the bone, I use rectangular arch wire in the lower arch as soon as possible. This way we can promote um, um, a, a torque, um, a kind of uh, resistant torque of the, the undesirable movement. This is actually was my response to his uh, question. So thank you for uh, for reassuring my uh, my uh, my thought process. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. Thank you, um, doctor. Next question: um, Is there any relapse happening in adult patients? if distalization done in class two with low anterior facial height? Yes, relapses, we, we, we always have relapse. Every orthodontist have really relapse, but we have to prepare uh, to prepare to, to not have these relapses, you know? So I use, to make a kind of um, overcorrection, in especially in rotation teeth, and in patients that is growing, I put a, 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 a appliance, a different appliance, um, functional appliance. In adults, we look at closer. We we can we we start. To, Adults with open bite, especially open bite, we have relapse. So I put something to in, inside the mouth for sleeping to avoid the tongue uh, touch in the incisors. But most of the, I think 9% of my relapse are from open bite because of the tongue. Tongue is uh, our problem, our orthodontist problem. Um. Dr. Hamoud asks, uh, what is the type of braces you would choose most often in a class two case? Um, question specifically regarding the prescription, would it be Roth, MBT, or other? Uh, I've been working with, um, I've, we, in Brazil we call SSW uh, kit from TP, and the uh, prescription is, um, Andrew's prescription, but the SSW SCL, this uh, new edge SCL that we've been working is better for our way of working because it's MBT uh, prescription. In MBT prescription, we have 17 degrees of torque in the upper incisors and minus six degrees in the lower incisors. It means this minus six is to avoid this problem that I have just talked with uh, our friend, uh, avoid to the lower incisors protrusion. And with 17 degrees in the lower, the upper arch, with uh, 017 or 019 by 25, we can achieve good torques. And we don't need to achieve, uh, to, to insert uh, O. 021 by 25, okay? It's easier to, to achieve good torques. So, uh, concluding, I prefer MBT for my, for class two malocclusion, I prefer MBT uh, prescription. Uh, thank you, doctor. Um, Dr. Cooper had a quick question on there too. He said, why did you change from tip edge plus with Roth prescription to a self ligating bracket? I never work with TPID Plus 
in the beginning, I was a TPI practitioner and I, I didn't like the TPI brackets on the incisors because the incisors move distally along with the canine and the upper incisors, we must move them, uh, retracting them, not in distalizing them. And uh, once I was, I realized it, that I was changing, I was bonding the, the right upper, upper incisor in the left side and the left bonding on the right side because I was afraid about that. And I thought, no, I'm going to, to work with a straight wire. And because this prescription of brackets uh, is the same of uh, tip and brackets, I mean, the same size, the same in out, is every, everything is the same. And the upper incisors and the lower incisor and premolar are straight wire brackets. Uh, we can achieve good results making retractions. And uh, I've changed it from this situation. But this, uh, responding to your question, the last webinar we talked about this because if, if we have uh, self ligating brackets on the anterior teeth, we have much more uh, freedom because uh, in TPI brackets, even the plus, we have to put the um, ligature and the ligature promotes some um, uh, actrate. And I, I made a, a, a kind of, um, kind of um, job in the lab comparing three prescription, um, SSW, conventional one, tip edge, and uh, self-ligating brackets. Self-ligating was the champion, far. But the most important thing is not the anterior teeth. I'm sure, I'm very sure that I can achieve good, very good results using SSW prescription, tip edge prescription, or, uh, um, of self-ligating prescription. But the most important thing is the tube, the O36 tube and the, the tip edge tubes in the molars. This is the best. Because if you have more friction, uh, uh, more friction or less friction than to your teeth, it's not so important. The important to have lots of freedom in the posterior part, that is the place that the arch wire is gonna slide in the posterior part. I hope I, I can uh, answer your question. It could. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, the next question um, comes from Claudia Pombo. Mm -hmm. and Dr. Pombo asks, is there any mandibular advancement in any of this cases as a result of the mechanics? Oh, Claudia, uh, I, I have, we, we made, we've made a study in Taubaté University comparing, uh, it was about 22 clinical cases, uh, comparing um, SSW way of working, or SSW cases made in, with uh, class two elastics, uh, XRL forces, and the other one is, um, um, I think was Herbest, if I don't, I don't remember, but I, I think it's worth Herbert's Herbert. And at the end, there was no difference. All of them, uh, we achieved the same results. And they, we conclude in, in this study that the most important thing is the patient. If you are treating a good patient, good growth patient, we have good results and bad grow, grower patient, we don't have good results. In good grower patients, I'm sure that whatever the, play, the, the, the brace you put in patient mouth, whatever the, the, the treatment you decide to do, we have, we have the same results. In my mind, the result, the mandibular growth result is just a little bit. We had a, a question come in on the chat about um, 
the finishing phase of orthodontic treatment. And Dr. Torvias asks, how long should the patient wear retainers after the orthodontic treatment? Would, would you be able to talk about what, how, you, how you best finish cases? How I best finished? Okay. Uh, uh, the retainers I use uh, a, a plate with a, a plastic plate, like Invisalign, you know, this is, this is a, like aligners um, in the lower arch, uh, K9 to K9, three by three, just that, okay? But in class three patients, for example, uh, that did not finish the growth, I put something, uh, an arch, an arch a removable appliance, uh, which um, uh, an arch, specific arch, uh, touching in the lower incisors. For patients that is still growing, class two, I put an um, orthopedic appliance for sleeping, okay? And adult patient, I uh, use only the, the conventional one, okay? And for finishing my, my, my cases at the end, if I understood well, I, I think the curves, the curves that I use since the beginning of the treatment, the arch wire, the incisors are good embracement, have good embracement, the premolar have good embracement, and the molar are not so good because the molar is in this position with the distal cuspid intruded. So in these cases, I have to change the molar tube and adapt the molar tube in a different position and put some uh, vertical slots in the posterior teeth. And in some cases, to, uh, while I'm going to, do, I'm making this with the molar, uh, I use to bond here in the incisor a bite ramp just to maintain the incisor, good incisor relationship. Uh, I hope I could. Uh, answer your question. Okay, we have um, another one. In the case you extracted upper second molars, this is from Dr. David Melamud. Um, in the case where you extracted upper second molars, if those second molars were in better position, not in, bite, not in scissor bite, would you have treated the case by upper premolar extraction only? How would the final result differ versus molar extraction? There is no difference between them. There is one difference only. Uh, at the end of the treatment, uh, when you extract second molar, the, 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 the teeth are better uh, because I smile with four upper premolars is for me, is much more beautiful than with two uh, premolars only. But the, the result, the enteritis is all, all the same because who is going to say what the ideal position for the upper incisor? It is the lower incisors. The lower incisors extracting upper premolars or extracting second molars uh, is gonna be at the same place is gonna be here touching in the lower incisor. If you extract second molars or pre first premolars, second premolars, first molar, it doesn't matter. The upper incisor is gonna be touching in the lower incisor and the result in the face, in the lip is gonna be the same. Uh, for sure, if you extract second uh, molars is more difficult in my mind. With upper premolars, it's easier to, to solve, I think, in that case. Good question. Thank you, doctor. Uh, we had some doctors chat in um, some clarifications on the first question I posed to you about the helix. Um, they performed me that a helix is a circle in the wire. Okay. So if that helps, you know, why would you change the, the helix, the circle in the wire? in the posterior arch, teeth in the posterior uh, I think I've, I made that because I, in that time, I remember the case. In that case, 
we were working with a boy that we didn't have the premolars, the lower premolars erupted already, okay? So, uh, and I would like to, in that time, I would like to wear short class two elastics. So I made a circle, uh, Alex, okay? In the lower arch, just to um, support the short class two elastics. But I don't use to do that. All in that situation. Okay, I think, um, oh, here we have one. Um, what do you do when the patient has several temporomandibular joint problems and we need to use class two elastics? I don't use. <laughs> Uh, when patients have a several temporomandibular joint problem, uh, we used to treat, uh, treat him before with plates. In some case, uh, I didn't, in some case with an open bite, I, I, I go straight to the, the, the braces, straight to the orthodontic treatment, because the plates is gonna be very huge plate in the anterior teeth. But sometimes I have, I use um, um, mini screw in the posterior teeth. Um, I think most of the patients with that problem have problems in the posterior teeth. It's a very uh, strong touch in the posterior teeth. So I, I put mini screw, I use to intrude posterior teeth and the pain disappeared. But if the patient wear class two elastic has, has plain pain, I have to move teeth one by one. First, I move molar distally, second, premolars, and I'm going to do, I'm going doing that, um, I'm going making that one by one. There is no way. I'm, I'm seeing here Erwin from, from Philippines. I would like to, to, to say hi from, from the guys from Philippines. I got very happy to, to know that they are attending this webinar. Um, even though in Philippines now is about two o'clock AM. Okay. So, uh, uh, a very strong hug for them and miss them, okay? And it looks like they were also saying happy birthday to you. Is today yeah, your birthday? Yeah, because tomorrow, tomorrow is gonna be my, my birthday. Thank you very much indeed. Well, happy birthday tomorrow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> because to, now is tomorrow in Philippines, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, just one last question, and, and, and this, one, this one was long, and I was going to connect you and Dr. Melamud via email at the conclusion of the webinar, but we had um, somebody come on, an, another doctor say that they really were interested in the question. So um, if you, on your Q&A tab, Dr. Rodriguez, if you can click on the answered tab. Okay, let me see. Uh, Dr. David Melamud at 1237 p.m. had a lengthy question about... Okay, so I saw. What's your view on lower premolar extraction in adult? Is, this, is that one? Yes, sir. Okay, what's your view on lower premolar extraction uh, in adult, non-growers with class 2 dental? Uh, I have repeatedly seen straight wire orthos avoid doing this because they find him protracting lower molars in adults. Very difficult. And many advises extracting such cases or access only upper arch. However, I see many cases by TA practitioners. What does TA mean? 
uh, round, routinely extracting for premolar even in adults and seem to have no issue bring lower molars and a whole mandible forward. Since the molar is protracted bodily, um, I don't see why bracket system would matter in this. So many, so long, too long. I have to, to read again because I lost. What's your view on lower premolar extraction adult? I have ripped and seen straight for what to avoid doing. The extracting teeth, promoting lower molars, protracting lower molars. I move more, it's okay, okay very difficult. And many advice. I think I, if I understood well, Dr. David is asking, saying that uh, some doctors are afraid about extracting four, more, four premolars, uh, afraid about moving the molars forward. Uh, last week, uh, we, uh, we've made a, a, a seminar to uh, Cairo uh, University. It was a very nice seminar. It was about two hours. And we've talked two hours talking about how to move molars forward in extraction cases. In fact, uh, moving molar forward bodily is not so easy. For me, it's easy because I got a way of moving them with a easy way. Uh, and, but we can move and I'm sure the mandible movement is gonna be uh, we're going, is going to achieve a, a different position of the mandible. The, you probably, in many cases, you cannot see so differences between the, the chin between, uh, before and after, because we use the spaces in the beginning to promote alignment and leveling. And the, the little piece of, the little spaces that uh, we had at the end of treatment is not enough to move the mandible forward and up, okay? But especially when we, we extract first molars, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can solve the anterior teeth problem and we can move for the, the, the second molars in the first molar place uh, a lot. In this way, uh, we have a, a a huge difference in the chin, the, the chin position. Okay, so I think the question, or the, the the doubt was that okay, because some practitioners routinely extract for more is even out and seem to have no we should bring lower. Um, TPH practitioners. Ah, TPH practitioners. practitioners. Okay. I think if, if I, I didn't uh, solve the, his doubt, please try again talking perhaps. Yeah, I'll connect the, I'll connect the two of you via email. Um, doctor, I have some yeah. other questions for you. Um, Dr. Tobias asks, how difficult is it to bring lower molars forward in adult class two patients with a four premolar approach, which used to be very difficult for many of us? So, as I think it's the same question. Uh, am I right? Almost the same question. It's not, it's not so easy, but uh, because we have to control the molars, when you, when you try to move the molars forward, um, can, I, can I open my, my, my screen again? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
Let me see here. Just a few minutes. I'm nice at you, mini plants at you, Caracas. Webinar. So take a look at here. We have uh, uh, Anchorage band make uh, near the premolar. This way the molar is gonna be moved uh, forward and there is a ramp from the molar to the Anchorage band. At the same time, this band is closer than the premolar and this band will extrude the premolar and embrace the premolar. And at the same time, we are wearing short elastics. Take a look at the molar movement here. Wrap kick and move Can you see the molar movement? Just molar move forward. It's a type of don't inside the water, an aquarium. So it's a real movement in this arch wire is not a rect the lower arch wire is not a rectangular arch wire because if you insert a rectangular arch wire, we are going to increase the, the, the anchorage and the anterior teeth. So I'm going to move one, one more time. You can see the molar movement. And now take a look at the anterior teeth. They are at the same place. And we increase the relationship, the, the, the embracing the anterior teeth. This is our way of moving molar forward, okay, without problems. Very fast way here. The molar movement, okay, when you put a uh, e link here, the molar tends to move and to, to tip. And both points start touching here and stop the movement of the molar. It's a moment of force, a horarium moment of force, clockwise moment of force, okay? So if you make a, a, a very light uh, anchorage band, about 10 degrees only, far from the molar and near the premolar, where when we insert this arch wire, in the incisors, the posterior part, the arch wire tends to move down and both points are going to be touched now. So we have here a moment of force in a counterclockwise way. So this way, the molar is gonna be moved forward and up. This is our way of moving. Okay. Uh, Ask him if I could um, answer his question. Absolutely, I, th I think that I think that works. Um, yep, Dr. Tobias says sure did. Thank you, Dr. Macias. Uh, with that, um, if there are any more questions, um, type them in now, or of course you can email myself at a, I I can find the, there you go. Email me at a troy.smith at tportho.com and I can get those questions to Dr. Macias. And um, with that, um, we have some people asking Dr. Dr. Rodriguez where they could buy your book. Um, unfortunately, my book in English version, where I, I, I've written three editions in Portuguese, two editions in English, one two editions in, in Spanish, one edition in Mandarin. And, but unfortunately, the English version edition was sold out. And it was a long time ago. I think uh, we have just in um, a Spanish uh, edition, we have some books. 
I think TP was selling my book in English, but it sold out. People from the Philippines got every single books. <clears throat> we, we did sell out of the English uh, version. Did you say you had a version in Spanish? Yes. Do you know where that could be purchased? Uh, by Dental Press. Yeah, Dr. Pombo um, was, was curious. I believe she's in Mexico. Um, so Dental Press. Or I think TP in Mexico, the last time that I've been in Mexico, I, I took with me lots of books in Spanish. And I think Rodrigo, Damaris, people from there, I think they have some to, to, to sell. Okay. And I have with me some, some books, but I can send them to it, to them. So I can send it to them. Okay. Yeah. Doc, Dr. Pombo, I'll um, coordinate with our TP Mexico department and see what um, Spanish um, language books Dr. Macias says we have. Um, uh, Dr. Melamud again was asking what wire size is being used in the picture showing forward molar movement? Uh, in, in the, the picture was um, Premier Plus 020. But my, it's not the ideal one. The ideal is um, 19 by 25 or 21 by 25. And we make um, um, round, we rounded it in the, post, the, the posterior part, you know? The anterior part is rectangular one. From the anchorage bend to the molar, we round it a little bit, okay? This way we have lots of anchorage and anterior teeth, and we have uh, a very, lots of freedom for the molar movement, for forward molar movement. Um, continuing on conventional wisdom, this is in the answered uh, portion of the Q&A um, at the 1.07 p.m. Um, central time frame timestamp conventional wisdom says flattening curve of speed pushes lower incisors forward recently dr melamud came across an article that says it's not necessarily so since molars are uprighted and you can actually gain a little space in lower arch what is your opinion on this first i have to understand the question the um, I saw, okay, flattening uh, always push the lower incisor forward. Recently, I came across an article that it's not necessarily. So, since molar are uprighted, you can actually gain a little space in the lower arch. Yes, it's, it's right. But in my mind, uh, if the speed curve, if you have a speed curve, I'm going to, to say that in my mind, 90% of these cases, the lower incisors is uh, um, backwards, is stupid, okay? Um, almost of this, this case, we want to move the molars, the incisors forward and down, forward and down. Uh, if we have the incisors in a good position, we don't have a speed curve, just the molar are tipped. So we have to upright the molar, it's, it, it's all done, it's solved. It. Speed curve, we have molar tipped and incisor tipped. If the incisor is good, we don't need to move the incisor, we have just to upright the molar. That's my opinion. Great. Well, I think that brings our, our Q&A session to a close. Is there anything else you would want to add, Dr. Rodriguez? No, no. I think okay. it's, for me, it's okay. Okay. Well, again, I'd like to thank everybody for, for being with us today. And uh, um, again, if you have any questions, I can be reached at troy.smith at tportho.com.
And uh, we look forward to, um, I know uh, Dr. Dr. Macias has wanted to do a third one of these. I think we can get that on the books uh, for people that want to continue learning more about uh, the simplified straight wire technique. Uh, potentially we can include some, some CEPHs in that one and we can start putting that together and we'd love to have you all back. Oh, we'll try. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I would like to say some words just before finishing. I would sure. like to say that I appreciate again um, people here uh, sharing with, uh, with us, as join us with this webinar. I hope I could solve uh, the, the, the doubts I'd like to, to say thanks, a special thank you for people from Portugal, from uh, Philippines, from Cairo, from USA. I saw people from the USA, Canada, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And I'm looking forward to see you again in the next one, the third and the last one webinar. If possible, if COVID permits, we can make this uh, personally in USA as uh, Tri told me before, uh, we can make a course in USA uh, personally, okay? Well, that is absolutely the goal. Yes, sir. We, um, once uh, we're all permitted to be together, again, we um, will absolutely get that going. Perfect. So once more, thank you very much to the, the next one, okay? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Little fresh.